Morning you guys, it's about 9 a.m. here. We're out at uh, South Fork Trailhead. We're gonna be making our way up to Dry Lake today to do a little overnight backpacking adventure. Come along for the trail. First bit of this trail is always so steep. And this thing is like straight up right here. So we're in about half mile or so. Just walking down South Fork Trail here. This area is really common to see wildlife in. I've seen deer here before. They actually scared the freaking crap out of me when I was hiking down one morning, but hopefully we can see something and catch it on video. I love taking rest breaks on the trail and eyeballing things like this, like this little dwarf conifer here right alongside of the trail. Then you got these like uh, indeterminate flowering trees that have these beautiful pink and red leaves. Really neat stuff out here. Lots of variety. Love it. Welcome to Horse Meadows, guys. You guys have been here in my other videos before, but a nice little rest spot. Probably a good mile down the trail. Benches in the shade, and then you can explore both the cabins here. Very nice. One of the more brutal spots out here. You can see the South Fork Trail here. Sugarloaf in the background. Pretty sure this is some fire service road here. Apparently it's too bright to focus. And the trail continues that way. And we're gonna head up there. And it's all very exposed, obviously, because of the lake fire. And I think there was another fire up here in the last like 10 or 12 years that have decimated this place. It's a different view now, that's for sure. Fair share of water running across the trail. I've probably crossed six or eight sort of streams just like this, easily filterable. Makes for a little bit of a muddy walk on the trail, so a little water resistant shoes good. So I wouldn't be packing too much water on this trip right now because there's a lot of water flowing down the trail. Okay, we're at the San Gorgonio Wilderness sign. And if you swing to the left, you can take a 0.1 mile trail up to Poop Out Hill, which is what we'll do because there's some pretty nice views up there. We're catching our first glimpse of the CNG Wilderness up there, which is super neat. So let's go check it out. Okay, back down from Poop Out Hill. We're gonna continue down into the uh, San Gorgonio Wilderness area. All right guys, taking a break here. About halfway between Poop Out Hill and South Fork Meadow. I can hear the creek flowing down there in the canyon. This trail really opens up, it gets really pretty right about here. This is more my hiking style. I don't really like the trail up before this because it's a lot of like thorny bush, really tight woven, rocky, like just perfect combination for snakes and stuff. So you gotta really pay attention. Um, I kind of like this more, you get it more in the alpine air, a little breeze. Here's cooler, gotta breathe a little harder, but it's uh, trail opens up a bit. You're more in the trees, there's more shade. So this is more my style. So I'm just taking a couple minute break in the shade. 
shoulders are hurting a little bit because I'm a, it's a brand new ULA catalyst that I'm uh, using for this trip. So I can bring in a little extra gear. And uh, it's riding good, but it's new, so it's going to be a little stiff and rigid and not riding perfect. And I'm wearing the wrong belt. I put on my uh, my gun belt, not my hiking belt. So it's uh, digging into my hips a little bit. Otherwise, pretty awesome out here so far. Gear's working good. The pack is nice. ULA water bottle pouch I do not like though because the uh, top is too tight. I, I gotta mess around with it a little bit, but I wanna say it sucks right now, but that doesn't mean it actually sucks. I might just suck at using it. <laughs> All right, enough blabbing. Okay, this is pretty cool. South Fork Trail is heading up this way. Last time I came here, this sign was not here. You can see uh, Lost Creek Trail for Grinnell Ridge Camp a mile away. Um, I know there's no water or anything there and it's all pretty barren. And it's basically, from what I understand, up about right somewhere up here on the other side of that ridge. And it has a great view of Sugarloaf, but it's all super exposed in. I don't know where there would be water other than South Fork Meadow a mile below. So I guess you could technically camp there if it's open, I don't know if it's actually open, but cool that the sign's there. I did not see that last time I came here. Let's keep heading on up. Should uh, almost be to South Fork Meadow, and I'm a little nervous about that. It's a lot of water flowing, and the avalanche area. It's gonna be pretty rough to navigate, I'm sure. We finally made it to the split. Dry Lake is gonna be to the left. Let's see here. Head this way, you can hear the creek. I'm getting nervous. It's a lot of water. <sighs> I'm out of breath. The creek crossings are a little sketchy. Okay, just want to cross the second part of the creek here at South Fork. All right, got some creek water here. Pretty nice. Oh, ice cold and so rejuvenating. Duke's Sausage Trail Snack. Mmm, these always hit the spot. Oh. Oh. Right on, baby. So, down this way, there's supposed to be trail here, but there's a crap load of avalanche debris that I'm gonna have to sift through. So we'll figure out a way through that. I'm probably just gonna sift straight through, ride the hillside and traverse up until I meet the trail again. Okay, so avalanche area, there's snow on the ground and somebody, uh, you may like this, you may not, but somebody did put up some pink uh, ties on the trees. You can see one up there too on that tree to help guide you through if you're a terrible navigator like I am again you may consider this uh, graffiti but uh, yeah there is snow on the ground a lot of down trees and not very easy going so just be cautious and watch your step don't want to fall into one of those things okay I think I just made it through there's about six or seven of these little uh, pink ribbons that really help out but if worse comes to worse and you can't find them you're just gonna want a beeline towards the hillside because the trail will connect further up so you can traverse 
basically head into the hill and then walk up towards dry lake and you will eventually hit the trail so that would have been plan b for me i'm going to keep going here there might be more avalanche stuff i'm not sure yet we'll see okay trail gets a little washed out here from the far side of the creek i could see trail right there though so i could cross anywhere i like just keep in mind you might lose the trail but just look over to your left you'll see the trail right there where the switchbacks start oh man dropping trekking poles is hard stuff nowadays Whew. all right my 511 pants have decided to chafe inside of my knee here so took a piece of tensor blast i think that's what it's called and uh, just put it on over, it works great. Sort of like duct tape. So, cover that up. I actually keep it right here on my backpack. Right up here so I can just rip it off, take my knife, cut a piece, just really quick access. So we'll keep up going on the trail. I'm getting my butt kicked, man. It's brutal. I'm not in shape. All right, this is the view that I love. This is the type of hiking I enjoy once you get up in that alpine air. We're hiking the switchbacks. We're amidst the trees, all the pines. This is the hiking that I enjoy. None of that rock scrambling, bushwhacking, thorn in your ankle wearing crap. Love it. But man, am I out of breath. I got another mile and a half to go. Whew. Trail update. Getting absolutely slaughtered like a 40 year old chick in a gossamer gear pack. It's freaking left me in the dust. <laughs> okay, canyon is starting to narrow, which means we are almost to Dry Lake. I'd say we have uh, less than a half mile to go. Pretty neat. The trail basically turned into the creek, as you can see. Basically, you just have to hike through the through the water a little bit, as you can tell. Staying off to the side, obviously, to not get your feet soaked, but that's the trail heading up, and it's the creek now. And it looks like from here on out, we might be hitting some snow, or just below 9,000 feet. Okay, about a tenth of a mile from Dry Lake. Basically, it looks like you're either forced to put on micro spikes and hike through the snow, Looks like there's a couple of feet there next to the creek or hike up the creek. I'm booted up with gators and micro spikes. So that's kind of thick, so let's give it a whirl. Putting on micro spikes was useless. <laughs> there was only like 50, maybe 60 yards of snow and you could have hiked it with shoes on. However, rejoice. See that down there? I don't know if you can pick that up, but that's dry freaking lake, baby. Yee! We're here. Oh my God. It is beautiful here right now. Holy moly. Look at the lake. Wow. Oh my God. So cool. All right, let's get to camp. Okay, we've made it to the dry lake sign. You can see we're going to be camping at Lodgepole Camp. It's the bigger camp next to the spring, although we don't really need the spring. Uh, spring is in the black there. There's a smaller camp right here, and then uh, over on the back side of the lake is Mineshaft Flats. So we're going to head up to the big yellow spot, find us a spot, and enjoy this lake view, make some lunch. You don't even need to find Lodgepole Spring because the creeks are flowing into the lake from multiple areas over here. This is before the first campsite. Lots of water around. Okay, so this is the first camp area that you come up to. There's plenty of uh, dry spots. There's just creeks flowing within like 20 to 30 feet of you. Everywhere you camp basically with little snow drifts here and there. So tons of usable campsites over here. Um, a little swampy, but uh, there are lots of dry areas over here. So usable. Okay, we're at uh, Lodgepole Camp now. And there's about a million spots 
that you could camp at that are dry. Some in the shade, some in the sun. Snow drifts here and there, so if you really wanted to camp in the snow, you could. So we'll go find ourselves a nice spot in the shade. We did it to Dry Lake. We're at Lodgepole Camp. Just sent a message on the Garmin to Veronica, my mom, brother, Matt and Steve. Got a nice little spot here at Lodgepole Camp. I've got creek water flowing 30 feet from my campsite and I'm underneath a massive 100 foot pine tree with tons of shade and a four foot snow drift off the side. It does not get any better than this. I don't see anyone else up here. It's all one girl, one up to maybe Sanji that smoked me. A couple people coming down. No one on the way up yet. I reckon someone will come up here tonight. Sure hope so. I don't want to be all alone, all alone out here. It's kind of freaky. It's just like sitting here talking to yourself. Not a sound in the air other than birds chirping. Kind of don't like it. It's nice to get away from people. The solitude rocks. Hiking at your own pace rocks. You're not slowing other people down or they're not slowing you down. But I don't want to share it with. And I sort of enjoy that. You know? So it's a little eerie, but I wasn't going to skip out on this opportunity. So, yeah. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Alright, let's show you guys a little camp tour. I'm beat, man. <laughs> this is a camera tripod that Jason recommended to me. I forgot the name of it. I think it's Aoka. Nice tripod carbon. Helinox Chair Zero. Don't know why I brought that. Because I normally just sit on this. The Z Light 20 inch full size mat. I should have brought the shorter one, but I thought there was going to be more snow here. Normal gear here. Uh, first aid kit here. Poop kit there with trowel, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, baby wipes, and a bidet. That is a med kit there that I keep in my front pocket. It's got sunscreen, ibuprofen, Tylenol, uh, toothache cream. Um, all kinds of stuff. Pepto-Bismol, bug net, alcohol, rag, temperature gauge on a carabiner. Uh, this time I brought some soda. Got a Tokes cook kit with a Soto Windmaster. Various snacks, sunglasses. Got a bee free there. And uh, then we got the z -Packs food bag. It's got uh, all my food in there. And as far as the backpack, ULA Circuit. It's brand new for me, it's completely stock. Worked out pretty good. And I put some uh, Tensoblast tape on the arm pad there. Peak Design V2 clip for my Canon 70D. Then we'll bring you into the shelter, z -Packs Duplex. This is the old version, I've had this for a few years. It's pitched like crap, but I really don't care. Inside. Thermarest X-Therm, wide, mummy shape, the Enlightened Equipment Zero Degree Revelation Quilt. That's overstuffed with five ounces. Um, I've got a blow-up pillow there, I forgot what the brand is, and then a uh, Costco shirt that will wrap around the pillow and the mat so that it doesn't fall off the mattress at night. We've got the Mount Hardware Ghost Whisperer, Mount Hardware Rain Jacket, a set of REI, Synthetic, or actually those are down gloves. z -Packs beanie. Columbia Omni Heat base layers, top and bottom. Um, a little reflective blanket. These are mechanics gloves that I'll put on if I'm uh, scooping water or something so I don't get my gloves wet. Probably the most important piece of kit here. Garmin InReach Explorer Plus. 
That's a military surplus USMC balaclava. Z packs down booties, hot hands. Uh, my headlamp, the NU25, and then uh, micro spikes and gators. That's about it. It's on me, REI hat. Got a neck buff, sun gloves, black diamond sun gloves. This is a light heart gear, uh, melanzana, copycat fleece. Very nice, thick hood, about the same weight. I've got the uh, windstorm whistle, the loudest whistle in the world. I just connected it to anything I'm wearing close by. In my pockets, Benchmade Griptilian, customized, full titanium, with all the tidbits. Uh, I got the Phoenix TK20R, it's like a 3000 lumen flashlight with strobe so I can see what I need to see out here. I always carry a Leatherman multi-tool, car keys. Um, got my wallet down here and then uh, because I do uh, CCW daily, I'll carry a uh, newest gen cat tourniquet in my right cargo pocket and a trauma IFAC in my left pocket. Uh, I'm wearing 511 tactical pants, that's about it. Solomon shoes, dirty girl gaiters, double socks. That's the loadout. All right, we brought a nice vanilla Coke here. Take out a little hole for this thing. And shove it in there. Leave it in there for a bit. Come back and have a nice soda. All right, boiling up some water on the menu today. Miso soup, G7 coffee, an apple, and I'm gonna do a Nor side for lunch. It's like fettuccine and savory chicken flavored sauce, so that's what we're gonna do. Probably ready by now. Pretty hot. And add some more water to that. I'm gonna take this Norse side and pour it in the freezer bag. Okay, we got a boil. Kick that off. Okay. Pretty hot. Take this, stir it up a little bit. And then I'm going to put it right back in here, like so. That's why we want to get rid of that air, so that it'll fit. Okay. Boom shakalaka like that. This whole thing goes in. Boom shakalaka like that. I'll just let that steep for a few minutes while I enjoy my miso. Okay, it's miso soup time. That hits the spot way better than coffee. Mm. Just relaxing. Could probably take a nap right now. I want to show you the view that I got. This gorgeous tree. Just laying under this bad boy. Sun's covered. 
So nice. You can eat an apple like an American. That way. I prefer to eat my apples like an Italian. This is the way to do it. Little thin slivers. That's pretty cool. Little snow cave action. This is 20 feet from camp. So red. Nice and clean. Full and done. Oh, getting a little chillier out here. I'm sitting in the shade next to a creek, mind you. It's like a 55, about a 5, 10 mile an hour random gust coming through here and there. You can hear it up in the higher elevation through the pine trees, which is really neat. Okay, so my little homemade concoction to heat food up works too well. This thing stayed hot forever. I couldn't eat it for like freaking half an hour. So I think it's cooled down enough now. I still have to blow on it though. Hmm. It's pretty good. A little north side, much cheaper than a mountain house. Hmm. Packs much smaller than a mountain house too. with that. That's yummy. Mm -hmm. It's gonna warm the belly right up. I like it because it's got thick noodles. Real thick and chewy. Reminds me of, I'm gonna date myself here, but <clears throat> soup plantation. Made a really good thick chicken noodle soup. Pretty neat from here, you can see the uh, the lake bed from my camp spot. You can see it kind of all around. Super cool. Pretty freaking sweet, huh? And you got the trees in the background too. Pine cone action. Pretty rad, dude. All right, finally sitting in the Helinox Cheer Zero. Pretty nice. I don't know if I'd bring it again. I always go through this quarrel, you know? I don't backpack enough to like have my setup completely dialed. Every time I go, I'm like, well, do I really like bringing the chair or like the Z Light mat, do I like bringing the full one or the cut down one? It's always the same freaking thing. And then, you know, temperatures, I've camped in 30 degree weather a hundred times. And I was messaging two of my friends last night, like, what should I bring? Should I bring my Ghost Whisperer or should I bring my Thick Area jacket? Like, dude, you know, <laughs> you know? So it's kind of funny how you just like second guess yourself. Yeah. Here's just some G7 coffee. So, this is my first proper solo backpacking trip in an actual forest wilderness. But I have actually backpacked solo three times before, before this trip. The first two trips I took, I walked from my parents' house in RSM down a mountain bike trail. And I went and backpacked into O'Neill Park twice. Went there midweek because I was in school, rocking a 85 liter Amazon backpack, <laughs> super uncomfortable, with a Coleman two person Walmart tent, an actual like kerosene lantern, 
a big cook pot. I, that, that pack must have weighed every bit of 60 pounds. It was absurd. I didn't have first aid kit or any of that stuff. And I would just go in like a hoodie sweater. And uh, that was like my first experience really camping. Um, and then I did another trip like that. Did the same thing. Um, and I had a good time. It was fun. I bought firewood there at the campsite. But it, then I progressed. I did one trip after hiking it a couple times up in uh, Laguna Canyon Wilderness, up in Morro Canyon. They have two campgrounds there that are backcountry, backcountry campsites. They're highly utilized hiking, mountain biking trails. There's basically no wildlife there. It's right on the beach. It's like a one mile hike in from the parking lot. So I did a trip there once and I freaking hated it. I was the only person up on the top. I had uh, this big ring at Morro Canyon and I was by myself all night. And there's like porta potties next to you too. It's, you know, it's a highly trafficked area. Not a single crew of Boy Scouts or anyone was camping up there that night. I was by myself and I was freaking terrified the whole night. I did not sleep a wink. I felt like my heart was racing the entire time. I felt like a, a mountain lion was gonna pounce at any moment. And so ever since then on, I never went backpacking again. I got rid of the Amazon backpack. I think I sold it on uh, Craigslist. And then um, all the other gear was, was car camp gear, so I hung on to it. But it took me a good, I don't know, five or six years to even think about getting out again um, because I started watching YouTube videos and um, I think I started off watching Tuba Solo the Hiker and Pharaoh and uh, I remember um, messaging Pharaoh he invited me on some trips and then I just chickened out and then um, I contacted Steve Tuba Solo the Hiker and he messaged me back got me out on a trip with him and Matt and uh, I think we did we went to Dobbs camp for that first trip so that was my first actual backpacking trip into a wilderness was Dobbs camp uh, I met Alan there and a bunch of other people I was rocking a 40 something pound pack that time 47 pounds an REI flash 55 with super heavy gear in it and ever you know ever since then I just even out there you know out on the front side of the range, you know, everyone says it's like bear country, lower elevation, a lot of water flow, a lot of critters. So even going out with those guys, I'd always get kind of freaked out a little bit. Never slept good for the first few years. And so I never thought about doing a solo trip again. And uh, this one just kind of fell in my lap because I had a couple of guys that I was gonna go with same dudes I always go with and you know stuff happens when you plan early and uh, so Steve had to bail which is totally fine uh, Matt had to bail for his own reasons can't fault him for that and so I was left with the decision do I want to go solo all the way up here this was kind of a big deal for me and uh, man I was freaked out driving out up here this morning man nerves of steel couldn't get my heart rate down, didn't have any coffee, didn't sleep at all last night, thinking about it. And uh, yeah, so far so good. It's a nice change of pace. We'll see how tonight goes. Pretty sure I won't sleep at all. Yeah, I don't know if I'll do it again though. I do enjoy chatting with guys that I don't get to see often. There's something special about sharing this place with other people. And, sharing those memories and getting to talk about it after there is something to be said about that the solitude is pretty awesome solo but I feel like I can get my little bits and pieces of solitude when I come with guys too so uh, hopefully if I do get out again those dudes will uh, tag along and hopefully they can stop giving me so much shit now that I <laughs> went on a solo trip and it's documented Anyways, that's my spiel, and I'm sticking to it. Man, this is rad. Snow as far as I can see.
pretty mushy, so I don't need uh, I don't need the micro spikes, although they would help. So one cool thing about Dry Lake and Lodgepole is just how many campsites there are. This whole freaking area is huge. You can see like 10 beautiful spots out there. And then even further back, back beyond this tree, this thing wraps up like another, I don't know, half of a football field. It's just massive. Look at this ice overhang. That's crazy. It is really hard to beat this. Ooh, ice cold. Wow. Just abundance of water. These little creek caves are everywhere. Oh, you can see through that one. Pretty cool. It's actually a nice, really nice flat spot right here. It's a huge flat spot. Fit like six tents right there.
basically like a marsh over here. I will say this is a pretty epic campsite here. 20 feet from the stream. Got a big log right here for gear. Massive tree for shade. And no dead standings close enough to cause issues. Because there are a lot of them around here. Relatively well protected with windbreaks all around big logs does help out logs here too and a little windbreak there with the snow it's pretty hard to beat this little spot here uh, this thing's been sitting here for a while clean it off a little bit Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, ice cold. Wow. That's nice. Could chill me even more by putting it in the Creek. Put a rock behind it. We're just experimenting here. That'd be one way to cool that down too. Ice cold creek water. A couple minutes of that flowing by. Heck yeah. Got the soda in the creek. Let's go get some soda. <laughs> this thing's gonna be freaking ice cold. It's a little chilly right now. Let's just see. Here it is. Okay. Okay, soda. Get on there. Let's take a sip. See how it is. Okay, this thing's gotta be. Ice freaking cold by now. Oh yeah. So this tastes different up here. More like carbonated almost because it's not releasing as much in the atmosphere. Rock on, that's good. A little soda up here hits the spot. Not to you, bye. Go cool. Cheers. Next on the menu, we're gonna do some tasters, nasty coffee and a miso soup. I'm just gonna use some uh, filtered water from the Bee Free, which I think this water tastes like crap. I've never, I love how fast the Bee Free flows, but it gets clogged up 
after you use it. Like it flows great. Look at that flow rate when you put some pressure behind it, but water tastes like crap out of these things. I think I'm gonna go back to the old Sawyer squeeze. Let's see. Can't beat those results though, that was pretty fast. And it is a lightweight setup. Of course, the old Soto Windmaster. Crowd favorite. And by crowd, I mean Tony's favorite stove ever. Absolute favorite stove ever. This thing absolutely rips. Pretty sure the squirrels got to my stuff while I was away. So my cups are cleaner than they were before, which is great for me. I guess that's pretty nasty too if they've got diseases and stuff. Whatever. Okay, I think we're good. Water's simmering. I don't want it to be at a boil. Oh, looks like we're burning this rag too, huh? These little thin REI rags are not in there for hot titanium handles, I guess. Okay. A little coffee. Why does the water look like that? I have no idea. But it does. Okay. This is a different miso. I don't know which one this is, but we're gonna try that one too. And all the misos. And we're trying all the coffees. Lovely. All right, let that sit for a minute. <sighs> Double fist and koozies. Coffee. Miso soup. <laughs> no, they're both way too hot, probably. Well, it's getting... Sun's going down. It's getting colder. Being by the shade and all this water, man. Bring the cool air down. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a frosty one. Up here tonight, that's for sure. Wow, Folgers is pretty shit. Folgers is nasty. I'm not buying that stuff again. Huh. I'll stick to the miso. I need one of these. come on every trip with me. So good. Buy a bag for like eight bucks. Stay good for like two years. Just keep them in your pantry. This one expires this month. <laughs> Perfect timing. Still tastes fresh. Light a uh, bare hand kit with the PCT stick. Try this, see how it goes. I am notoriously terrible at this.
All right, let's make some chili mac and beef. Amazing. Ooh, candles are cold for once. Nice. Alright, tonight we're having chili mac. It wants 12 ounces of water, so we've got about 13 or 14 there. Why? Because. I one time got a bowel obstruction, a partial bowel obstruction from eating too many of these in a weekend when they were too dry and I put enough water in them. So now and forevermore I add a little extra water so that I never go through that again because it happened three hours from the nearest hospital in the desert. It's pretty messed up, huh? not having enough water bowel obstruction so I'd mix them mix them a little heavy hmm chili mac would be never disappoints There's no, there's no way this will get picked up. But there's all these, there's like a hundred, at least a hundred little frogs in this water right now. All making noises and jumping around, tiny little things. What a trip. Whoa. <laughs> Nuts. Morning guys. It's a uh, Saturday morning down here in Dry Lake. It's about uh, 37 degrees, 38 degrees down here. I got a little chilly and a little damp last night next to the creek. I didn't really sleep at all to be honest, which I expected. 
Uh, sunset's coming up now. I'm going to have some sausages real quick. Just pulled the food down. We're going to take some pictures of the lake. Then after we'll make some breakfast and coffee. The wind was howling last night up on the top of the peak. You could hear the wind rustling through the trees. That was pretty cool. We love listening to the wind in the alpine air. Just rustling through the pine leaves. Pretty amazing. I find it so neat how the creek just finds its natural way towards the lake, goes underneath the logs, takes the path of least resistance, splits off, and merges back together. It's just neat. Like how it does this. This is just one of probably four creeks that are running through Lodgepole right now. The natural little waterfall. Flowing through there. Let's just follow this one. All the way into the creek and all the way into the lake. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous this morning. Absolutely gorgeous. Now we're heading down the back side of the lake. We're gonna head towards the lake entrance. Get a nice picture. Mineshaft Flats is back there.
here's the first meadow that you walk up to when you first walk into Dry Lake. Not often uh, videoed or photographed. I want to just kind of go up there and just take a look. Be pretty neat. Get a cool view from up there. Let's let's go up there and take a look. All right, guys. We're in the we're up atop uh, one of the meadows here at Dry Lake, a couple hundred feet above the lake. I've never walked up here before. It's pretty rad. This is super cool up here. Yeah. Wow. If I ever come back, this is where I have to do my morning photography. It's going to be up here for sure. Sunrise pictures from here. Yeah. Alright guys, just got done with some photography. The wind is coming and going. It's definitely a windier day today. So, good thing I, I think I came out last night or yesterday, but I don't know, maybe the here in the howling wind would have been better <laughs> tonight because it was eerily quiet last night so you could hear everything. But uh, this morning, we're going to be making some uh, G7 coffee and I'm going to be doing Veronica's favorite oatmeal. So this is just plain oatmeal, and I like to throw a little peanut butter in there for some added protein, because my legs are shot. They don't hike a lot, so we'll get the stove going here. Okay, that's going. Water's pretty much almost done for coffee. Take my G7 and just Toss that in there. Well, too hot. that up. Nice yummy coffee. Yeah, that might be a little too hot to drink off the bat. Alright, Soda Windmaster never let me down. Piso works great. The stove is absolute perfection. There's my view of camp. I'm just cooking, you know, 20-30 feet away. I've always had a bad habit of not cooking far enough away from my campsite. I just, it's just comfortable being next to all your gear and stuff. Hard to beat this, I don't want to leave. You can see the light breeze in the air. Alright guys, coffee's good now. Mmm, man I love G7. Okay, so, here's my little setup. I've got my oatmeal steeping. Again, koozie that I made at home with Reflectix, a little Reflectix lid. And then I just put the stove on top to let it hold the heat in. This thing will literally stay hot in the cup too long. So, my north side last night I think I shouldn't have put it in there. It, it, it took forever <laughs> for it to cool down enough for me to eat. Nice, nice wind gust coming in. So with my oatmeal, this is my trail staple breakfast. Love it. I'll do just regular unflavored plain oatmeal. I'll throw a little packet of peanut butter in there. And then I will take either another packet of G7 or a Starbucks Instant. And I'll pour it in there. Or I'll just pour a little bit of my coffee in there. That way it gets a little bit of that coffee flavor too. That makes it really nice, really flavorful. Um, it's I only do it backpacking and uh, car camping, but it is my favorite breakfast out here. We're about ready to head on out once, once breakfast is served. This has got to steep a little bit more. It is getting there. Still a little soupy. But again, I do like 
my food a little soupy. I told you about why. I don't like it to be dry. I don't want to have the issues like I did last time in the desert. Hmm. Hmm. That is good. Oh man, I don't want to leave. I was kicking myself for not waking up earlier. I had finally fallen asleep at like four in the morning. I think I woke up at like six. So I got like two hours of sleep. And I should have gotten up at five. I just never set an alarm to go shoot some sunrise photography. And that meadow that I walked up to, you're gonna have to do that again when I come back and do morning photography from the top of that meadow. So that's gonna be one heck of a gnarly hike in the dark, kind of freaky. But uh, hopefully I'll go out with a couple other guys. Uh, hopefully Matt, Steve, or Jason, or all three of them join me on the next one. Cause that'd be cool. Head up to the top of that meadow and take the picture from the high up view of the lake and the mountain cascading in the background, San Gorgonio. Yeah, that's where it's at. So I'm kicking myself a little for that, but oh well. Nice cup of oats, a little soupy. Mmm. Now we're talking. Need a freaking bib when I eat. <laughs> good, thing, good thing this isn't grizzly country, man. I'd be screwed. Well, anyways. I'm gonna get to enjoying this breakfast. Kick the camera off, just have some alone time before heading out. All right, we're about to leave camp. Camp's all cleaned up. Time to go. It's always bittersweet. All right guys, one last view of the lake before we head home. I'll be signing off here, hiking down the trail. Thanks for coming along on my solo backpacking adventure. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.